Yo, this episode is dedicated to Shasha. Yo, rest in peace, homie. Um, for me, and I know Hanif got a lot to say, but for me, bro, you were you were my childhood friend. We went to Warren Street School together. Uh, Hanif brought me in when you two were already a tag team, and I always appreciate that. And when I see you when we grew up and we adults, you always kept in love with me. Even when I was making music with your cousin, Butter, everything was good. But um, Hanif, what you got to say, bro? Yo, I, I recently found a picture, you know what I'm saying, of, of my preschool. And Shasha was there. Like, we literally came from the sandbox to adulthood. And that's always been my man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just talked to him a couple weeks ago. And we, it, like, it was just crazy because uh, I, I got a bad rap of not answering my phone. You know what I'm saying? I got to do better with that. But I picked up the phone. It was a FaceTime, man. You know, he just wanted to bust it up. And we busted up for like three hours just talking about old times, talking about, you know, what he got going on currently. And some things that stood out because, you know, he, he always joked like I was, the, I was the brains of the operation and he was the muscle. You know what I'm saying? And he was always telling me like, yo, you ever need me on some street? Shit? Like, I got you, bro. Don't say nothing. So, but I was always... In his ear, like, nah, bro, like, you gotta, you know, make sure you're on a straight and narrow, doing your thing, like, you got shit to live for, blah, blah, blah. So he told me a story, like, yo, he, he used to come home from work, and, you know, he worked um, for the city in North, and, you know, when he would be changing his clothes, like, the front of the door, so he don't track it in the house, his son would bring him his slippers. And he was like, yo, that's the proudest moment that I ever had. I don't want nothing else in life. Is That's my life. Like, that's love right there. So to have that conversation and then for him to suddenly pass, it, it's a sad day, but we're going to rep for you, bro. And I love you. And you know what I'm saying? Capo, you're going to always be in our hearts and our memory. Hey, yo, what the f***? This is a pallet s*** right here. The Late Night Flight is paid for by the following. You should have been recording, sir. Do your job. <laughs> <laughs> ma'am, ma'am, I am the job, all right? You watch yourself. Watch you yourself. You up there trying to flex the muscle real quick. You should have been did that. Nah, nah, nah. You watch yourself, all right? Clock starts when I start. That's how that go. It's a bunch of us. I'm a hand of colony. Everybody on a mountain, everybody marching for a young nigga like me to get tsunami on it. I'ma get it, I'ma win a baby. I'll be on my curry till I crash a bird in 40 on the tech. Yeah, I'm acting nerdy if it's at the appellation to the appellation. I'ma do whatever that it takes to make a black nation. Hold on. And now, here are your pilots the informative Hanif Sowell and the greatest Henny Badger who has ever lived, Nasur Nuru. Gia, what do you want to talk about? Do you want to talk about Lil Nas X? Do you want to talk about Lil Mama? Do you want to talk about COVID? Or do you want a cuff card read by me? Uh, the card read by you is a little tempting, but <laughs> do the Lil Nas X thing. All right, Hanif, throw it to her. All right, so Lil Nas X is in the news this week because he had a controversial video and now he's releasing a new sneaker um, that is Satan-centered. Um, <laughs> what are your thoughts on that, Gia? How you, how you feel about what he's doing? <clears throat> um, I feel as if that he's nothing but a puppet at this mm. point. I feel like we have to... This is when you have to be more aware and you have to understand that there's an agenda behind everything. Um, and I feel like when he first came out, you know, it was this nice guy that we're all trying to advocate for. And now I feel like this is just another way to push out black male masculinity. Mm. And the easiest way to do that <clears throat> is to put LGBT behind you, behind it, because they make it seem as if that is the total opposite, right? So now you have, because if you have black males that are really masculine and that knows what they supposed to know, that is the biggest problem right there. And they don't want that, right? So the easiest way to do it is to push something out there like that, that is going to make people feel bad for him. If you say something wrong, you're anti this, you're anti that. But we need to look at the better, the bigger picture and as for, you know, our black males that's being 
crucified because they want to be masculine. And just because you want to be masculine doesn't mean that something is wrong with that. So that's what I got for that. I feel like he's just a puppet and he's getting paid for it. That's it. Yeah, I, w- I would just add that, you know, I was thinking about it. it it's, it's basically Marilyn Manson. They they mm-hmm. taking that formula and running with it. It's another promotional tool that he's trying to do to stay relevant. Mm-hmm. Um However he however he choose to get it, I'm going to quote Old Dog and saying black people got too much d- religion anyway. Right. You know what I'm saying? So right. he could rock out how he want to rock out. It's not nothing. That I, I don't personally feel like there's um, an attack specifically on black people in their psyche. Mm. I just feel like he... You don't think that it is? Not, not in this case. I, th- I think that he's... Per- uh, trying to stay relevant and this is the, the most extreme thing that he can do because everybody's talking about it we're talking about it he's going to promote he's going to make some money from well, it I think that it is and I think that it is also this mental state because I saw a tweet from him that said oh um, when I was young I was very angry and now I want people to be angry too Mm. You stated something like that. Something ain't right hey, enough. Hey, hey, let's hey, let's go to Pete. My goodness, Pete. So you can either do COVID, Jesus, COVID, Lil Mama, or a cuff card read by me. Um, I'm gonna take the cuff card. All right, Ooh. cuff I'm card. I'm buying your blouse right now. No. <laughs> Yo, what? Okay, that's all good. That's all good. That's all good. That's all good. Okay, I think this is very normal. This is a normal cuff car. This is actually pretty good. You ready, Pete? I'm ready. Pete, you look great, by the way, today. I'm telling you, you look <laughs> Oh, good. hello. You look really, really good. <laughs> Just want you to know that. Okay. Would you rather date? All right, Pete. Would you rather date someone you are sexually attracted to or someone you trust? One or the other? Um, would you date? Would you rather date someone who you are sexually attracted to or someone you trust? Minute on the clock, go. Date, not marry. I'm gonna say sexually attracted to. You want to? You want to <laughs> say why? You have a you have forty seconds left. Yeah, we have to have that chemistry, Scorpio. We have to have that chemistry. If we're just dating, trust, commitment. Nah, I'm not really. We're not really talking about that right now, but I want to go outside with you and I want to be attracted to you. So I think I'm going to go with sexually attracted to because I'm still immature. Mm. <laughs> I don't I don't have anything to say back to that. What, what about you? Honey? I, I mean, that was that was clear and straight to the point. Yeah, yeah I like I, I like sure that. Better. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, yes. I'll, oh, my God. I. I love dark skin women. That's all I can say. <laughs> all right. So, okay. So, all right, Hanif. Hanif, is your go. What you want to do, my G? You can do it. Stop, stop rubbing your. She rubbing. Oh, hey, yo, that's, that's not nice. That's, like, first of all, <laughs> pre, 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 recorded, pre recorded show. That's not getting on the podcast, number one. And all I did was just touch my chest. That's not nice. Yeah, that you was rubbing your. Hey, yo, I was not. Oh, hey, yeah, yo, the sure. the sword. Let me see. I wasn't you got everything out. Hey, yo, no, no, no. Chill out, chill out. No, no. That's not nice. That's not, that's, that is not nice. That is not nice. I can't like what we doing here. <laughs> that ain't even Come really a shirt. That's like a long bib. That hey, you got. Someone, someone has a man in a living room and someone is getting penis on their way with a fitted. All right, let's just leave me alone. Leave me alone. I'm lonely. I'm lonely. Leave me alone. You can't assume. That's all I'm saying. Honey, if you want to do little mama or do you want to do COVID? Uh, um, I, I'm going to do little mama. I mean, okay. So just, you just, you just go ahead and rock with it. Like you, like, I mean, you introduce it and then just put I'll put a minute for you. You got it. So I, I was having a conversation yesterday, um, about how our generation, right. I feel like everybody after maybe 87 forward has an agenda. You know what I'm saying? Like our generation, we still a little bit old school. So what little mama was basically saying is that like, she feels that she can't voice her opinion and be who she is without that community attacking her for some of her stances. 
And it's getting to the point where you identifying as a straight heterosexual person is becoming an offense to people who don't, who identify as gay or trans or lesbian or whatever. Like, I don't, I'm not into trying to offend anybody or trying to, you know, uh, knock anybody for their lifestyles. But as straight people, we need to have a voice too. You know what I'm saying? And I think I feel her on her stance and, you know, she shouldn't be getting attacked by it, but that's what that community seems to be doing right now. Yo, did you ever, did you ever watch, um, what's the name of that movie? Foolish with Eddie Griffin and Master P? I did not. Yo, that's a dope flick. But more importantly, more importantly, he said what you basically just said, and I'm pretty sure Gia would agree with this. We should just start having our own straight parades. The same way the gay people have a gay parade, we should have a straight parade <laughs> where you have that. women just singing kumbaya around a big ass. Just running around. <laughs> what I'm saying. I think that's. I think that's Mardi Gras and carnival, though. Hey, is listen. It, exactly. I'm with. I'm with Gia on that. Is it? That, <laughs> you gotta. You gotta listen. The gay people. No disrespect. Gay people are cool. They have put a mountain on this earth where they like. This is our parade. This is what we do. Why can't we have a heterosexual parade? What's wrong with that? Oh my- what do you think about her double down on it, Neef, and um, starting her heterosexual um, community that she said on her Instagram? What do you think about that? I mean, it's, it's getting to that point. We're going to have to figure out a way, a safe space for us, because even this conversation right now, like once if I run for office or something in the future or whatever, <laughs> this conversation is going to come back to bite me in the it ass. And really I feel will. like, like I said, as a man, who is heterosexual. I love women. I love vagina. I should be able to say that proudly. I disagree. I feel like you sound like the people who say, why do we have to have a Black History Month? We don't have to have a heterosexual parade because everything's heterosexual. Mm. We don't have to have a a, a big stand for for straights because everything is targeted towards straights. Mm. I'm about to use Gia uh, words. Is it though? Is it though? <laughs> is it though? I don't know. Is it though? I don't I think know. It's more, I think it's more so from the men though. Like I feel like, and, and Lil Mama, she got more flack just because she always get more flack. Like she, she just one of them people that people always go in on her. But I think it's more so when men kind of have an opinion on something, they automatically get labeled as like toxic, ma- toxic masculinity. Right. And, mm-hmm. This is down at third. So I think men feel it because honestly, women, we can be bisexual in a safe place. Like mm-hmm. majority of women I know is either bisexual, bi-curious, did some, you know, and we would never bat an eye. So when it's a woman, it's different. But men, they they don't get that that same, you know, freedom, unfortunately. This is so. why this is why a double standard actually works sometimes because <laughs> think, think about I a don't guy. Know if it works but it is there oh it's no there. no well, ch- check me out uh, i understand what you just said check me out on this gia so hey hanif yo yo my yo what's good yo listen last night was crazy i was at hat city kitchen with the fellas ladies and shit you know what I'm saying this woman wanted to come back to the house it was me it was smart so you know what i'm saying and the chick you know what i mean and then we you know it's getting a little hot and heavy a little dp action then all of a sudden you know what i'm saying like he touched me and you know, I, you know, whatever. I just kept, you know, whatever. Just kept doing whatever I'm doing. You know, what I'm saying, he was just touching my stuff while I was, you know, what I mean, I don't know. What, <laughs> but, but, like, but I'm, but I'm straight though. Like, you know, what I mean, like about the. Uh, listen. <laughs> uh, listen, hold on. Hey. Uh, damn. Huh? There's some women listen, out there that huh? as your, hold on as your as your friend for thirty years now. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't try and offend you, but I would be like in my head, definitely like, yo, that's crazy. Don't like, say it. <laughs> that's all I'm saying. He's wild. That's all that's I'm wild. saying. That's wild. That's all like, I'm that's saying. Crazy. That's all like, I'm I saying. Can't. Thank God that we are in a place where COVID is now more of a common cold, where you can be like. I just contracted COVID and everybody is just like, yo, I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Because last year it was like, yo, oh, my man about to die. He got COVID. It's crazy (laughs) out here. It reminds me of what the Europeans did to the indigenous people here, 
where they brought uh-huh. malaria and gonorrhea and any other small Anglo-Saxon, pox. the smallpox, you know what I mean? Any other Anglo-Saxon disease that they brought through and it was a biological warfare. So before guns even had to get drawn and kill all the Indians, they already like wiped out a third of them, no problem. This is what's happening to us. It's just a new lab created disease that they didn't want to release out the release out the lab. It got out the lab and now we suffering. But thank God again that it's not at that level anymore. And more importantly, Biden has what? Another month with me. April 20th, that's the day where he needs to let us know what's about to happen. Cause he said a hundred day um in a hundred days, a hundred million people are going to receive a vaccine. So to me, I was like, oh, he giving himself three months. He's on borrowed time. He need to let me know what's going on. Cause Texas, where I want to move to, they already like Fuck it. We open. The states run this. Shit. You know what I mean? States run this country. So I'm just waiting for Phil Murphy to be like, yo, let's just do what we need to do. And I can live life again. I don't know if we're there yet, though, because people are still dying. Like some of us aren't. A lot of us still are. (laughs) I I would say this one thing. and Hopefully I won't uh, put this on the podcast, but I'm just talking to y'all. You know, a lot of older people died because of COVID. I think they died from pneumonia. That's what, so, so my point I'm just making, I'm oh, sorry, you made, you made my point for me, Gia. The point I was just making is some of these older people that died, I think they just died of old age, but because doctors got paid to say that they got they died from COVID and he was getting this bread, I think it was just a money train running around, at least for the first five, six months of this. Is Baltimore trying to remake The Wire into a reality show? Okay. Yo, so, who's, who's watching TV? Is that paid? No. <laughs> All right. So you got the state's attorney in Ma- of Maryland, uh, Marilyn Mosby, who's uh, she started an initiative during COVID to stop uh, a lot of people being in prison or jail. And she wasn't prosecuting drug crimes, prostitution, smaller traffic violations and things like that. So now she's actually making it into a permanent um, a permanent law where she's not going to prosecute or do any of those things. So the funny thing about that is she's actually now being investigated by the FBI because she... Um, is starting this initiative that a lot of people don't like. So the FBI is investigating her charitable donations and they're trying to find some criminal acts between her and her husband to prosecute her wrong. So uh, the question is, is how do you all feel about her taking this stance to stop black people from going to jail and the repercussions that come after that? Uh, start with Najia. Um, so I read I actually read into it last night and for one, I definitely love what she's doing. I mean, not to try to sound like a asshole, but if I want to sell my vagina, I should be able to sell my vagina. Like, who are you to tell me that I cannot sell my vagina? So mind your business. So I don't, I don't think nothing is wrong with that. If I want to get high, I should be able to get high. Now I do feel as if that, Unfortunately, that comes with it. It's like twofold. When you want to start shaking the boat and pissing people off, people are going to ultimately get upset with you and people at high places are going to start doing things. So I wasn't even surprised when I was reading it, but I just, you know, and it looks like they're investigating her and her husband, right? Right, right. Um, Yeah, so I just hope that it works out for them. The article that I was reading, I liked it because, you know, we're just saying like, Nothing is what they're doing is credible right now. They have not indicted them. They have not done anything. They're just investigating them. So, you know, just don't be <laughs> saying anything that can ultimately sound crazy. But, you know, I'm I'm just hoping that it work out for her because we that's the sh- that's to me that's the sh- that we need as black people. My thing is if the other states are legalizing it, then why at this point it might as well just be legal. You know what I mean? Like you can't pick and choose which state is going to criminalize it and which state isn't because then it just doesn't make sense and it sounds like it's targeted. Yo, I love how Pate just, like, it's a it's a bottom line. Yo, you are one hell of a car saleswoman. You have to be, yo, because you don't talk much. I like your style. 
I like your style, Pete. You know what I'm saying? You, yo, you don't talk much. You get to your point. Bam, boom, get up out of here. Back massage for the man. Yo, I appreciate this woman. I appreciate her so much. I appreciate Marilyn Mosby, yo. This like she, yo, to just come out of nowhere at a press conference and say I'm shutting down all of these nonviolent crimes. That's that's amazing because here's the special thing about it, in my opinion. Realistically, some of these things aren't necessarily crimes, mm. right? Like so. So here's the thing, and this is a person that been in and out of. Essex County Correctional. Now, I'm not saying I'm some criminal. See how that sounds? People are like, what? For what? <laughs> I'm talking about you can get pulled over for parking tickets and now I'm in jail. <laughs> now I got a grandmother, a aunt, and another aunt thinking that I'm some criminal. Right. I go to a cookout. They want to say to me, so you keeping your nose clean? What? <laughs> Where, where's my... Mom, mom, grab my resume for this woman can see what's going on over here. Like, So now I'm... You know what I mean? Like, I am defined as something else, a delinquent, rather than a professional, just because I got locked up for some parking tickets. So I think the American government, which they probably won't do, they need to change the language of some of these things that's that's out here. Yeah. Because prostitution isn't necessarily a crime. I think it's just a decision. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's a, that's a, it's a hustle. It's a choice. I'm in a bind, Nate. Uh, and yo, but like, 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 let's talk about how since she uh, implemented this initiative, crime has been down over twenty percent. You know oh, what I'm wow. saying? So you seeing results where it's like, okay, we are changing things, and it gives police more focus on they could focus on the violent crimes and the murders and the domestic mm-hmm. violences and the things that actually matter where people's lives are being hurt. Old. Now hold on. Now y'all know that's never happening because ain't no money in that. Money is in you know what I'm saying locking your punk <laughs> up for driving for 50 miles somewhere. You know what I'm saying? That's where the money at. That's where the quota at. We all know that being from Newark, it's like yo, they got a quota to reach. It's like it's yeah. the end of the month. Why are you pulling me over at McDonald's? I ain't do nothing in here, yo. Cause it's the end of the month. They gotta get it. All right, just give me the ticket. Mm-hmm. We'll, I'll right, fight this right, later. Right. Hurry up. Right. Crazy. I feel like that's the same reason why prostitution is, isn't legal and why they're locking you up for prostituting because they can't make the money off of it. Yeah. Hey, yo, what the f? This is a pallet sh- right here. Is Georgia trying to remake Jim Crow? What do you all think about, you know, this new law as it, as it pertains to Black people and how it's going to affect voting going forward? It's, it's definitely Jim Crow. It's definitely at least Jim Crow-esque. Um, I read something where it was saying they won't even let you get water in the line. So now they want you to stand there for all these line, all these hours and you can't be hydrated. It's probably going to be some type of temperature, you know what I mean? And you're just out there and they want you to leave the line so that your vote doesn't count. Right. Hey, yo, I'm mad as hell about all this, honestly. Why in God's name do white Republicans think that we are just drunk, lazy, low income, don't give a f- about this country? We just showed you that we ain't want someone else in this country. All right? We stop acting like, yo, let me ask you something. I want I want to ask you something, Gia. So check me out. Oh, no, for real, for real. No, no, check me out on this. Check me out on this. Do you think, do you mm-hmm. think that the way that credit is set up, mm, that okay. they have so many barriers of how you can qualify for certain equity and they made sure that it checked boxes that black people couldn't. So now we starting, now don't get me wrong, if I was financially educated at 17, 18, 19 years old, I would easily be like, I could have got a Macy's card, just bought some socks, pay off the socks, just keep going. No one taught me that. And I'm pretty sure white and uh, Latino people don't li- uh, learn that all the, all the way as well. But I just find it funny that they always try to find some things to check off our boxes to put us behind. I, I just like this right here is just like this is so outdated. This is 1960. Like now you're saying that black people don't wake up, put clothes on, go to work. You know what I mean? On time. Like it's just like 
come on, our jokes that we put towards each other, that's just our culture. Like when we put to CPT, that's that's a joke. We are all on time for work. And even if we not on time for work, it's because we f- supervisors and managers. OK, like we have come up now in these days. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, Gia, would you, you agree with me on that? Like, as far as they barricading us through equity or through voting rights, through rights, period, in this country. I agree. I feel like it's just another level of racism. Racism is a systematic thing. It's not a feeling. That's prejudice. This is racism. Is a reason why people, I know people personally that have 800 credit scores and cannot get a business loan, but can go and get a car loan with no money down. So, yeah, it's, it's, we, we know that. That's just systematic racism, and that's how they do us. I was going to interject to say CPT is real, though. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a testament to that. If you would like to be a guest on the Late Night Flight, hit me in my Facebook DM at Hanif Sowell or email us at thelatenightflight at gmail.com. Is good vagina a burden on women? All right, so my my man hit me and he wanted me to to pose this question to uh, to Facebook, and he was saying that you know with all of this talk about uh, good vagina and you know how that works, he wanted to know if women who have good vagina are burdened by it. Could it be? Uh, some sort of like Achilles heel where things actually don't turn out in your favor because you have good vagina. And I wanted to get some women's takes on that. So Gia, how do you feel your vagina affects the men that you deal with? Well, I'm a Scorpio, so (laughs) you know. I mean, that that just, we all know (laughs) Scorpio. I feel like it's a burden um, just because I'm, I try my best to be in control of situations that I'm in. So if I really don't want to deal with you anymore, I'm not dealing with you anymore. Um, I'm very black and white. There's no, there's no middle ground with me. So I think it only becomes a burden if, you know, that, that is constantly pulling at you and is weighing you down and this, listen, you know, it was good, you know, it was good for you, it was good for me and I don't want to do this anymore, that's it. I, you know, I'm more than likely going to be the best you ever had, but that's going to be your issue, not mine. So it's not a burden for me, it's probably a burden for them. You know, I feel bad for them actually. So, yeah, I'm good. Best you ever had, Gia, you said? Still your best by giving on. You're welcome. Oh, okay. Hey, what is your vagina doing to men that makes you feel like you might have to relax a little bit? Mm. So, all right. I feel like having good anything is subjective, right? There's no one size fits all with sex. What one person likes, the other person may not like and vice versa, right? Uh So I can't say that it's a burden on me. When I like you, I like you. And you know that I like you. That's really just it. You know what I mean? If I like you, I like you. If I don't like you, we're not even going there. So it's not a burden on me. I've had exes that want to get back, but that's on some, we're probably better off as friends. You know what I mean? Right, right. I mean, but did did, like did any of y'all get stalkers or men who's like, yo, nah, you get yeah, that to men me. Men don't leave. Men don't yeah. leave. That men don't leave. Yes, I, I it, it, yes, that is true. Um, I don't know if it's like this crazy preference thing, but for an example, I have a guy that I have not had sex with in three years. Three years. Just because my phone number is still the same, he would still call me here and there like, yo, like nothing ever happened. And I'm just like, are you crazy? So, a lot, you know, not to try to sound funny, but men don't leave. I feel like they try to do these temperature checks to see if they can still have access to you. And yeah, um, you always have these lingerers that always... And then you got the crazy ones. I better not see you and nobody. <laughs> you know, like those them type of things. I just think that's that's a that's a given. Gia, uh, Gia, you know? why 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 the conceit though? Why 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 does it have to be? Why do you have to present it in a in a manner where you're basically saying with a man, oh, you just oh man, like you you 
on me. Like, get off. You clingy. You this, you that. Like, that's how I feel. Because once when I'm over you, I'm over you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, I, I don't have, I can't even act like I like somebody. Right. It's very difficult for me to act like I like somebody. And I put people in boxes as bad as they sound. Like, I can either be a friend with you. Or even if we're friends with benefits, we're friends with benefits, right? right? right, right. And if you're my boyfriend, now you're my boyfriend. We're monogamous. We're, so once when I have you somewhere, I keep you there. And if you come out of there, it's just weird to me. So it's really not a conceited thing. It's just like, you know, that's not what we're doing anymore. Well, how do you I'm know? Hold on. Now, like now the only way you would know that, though, is through communication. Right. Like you both oh, have very, to agree I'm, to like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. No, no, no. You, you said nothing wrong. I was just asking. I'm trying to get in depth. It's, it's just... not like a conceited thing. Mm-hmm. It's just like I know how I am with people. Yeah. So if I have not flirted with you or if I have not been to your house and we have not had sex in three years, why are you acting like we just had sex a week ago? So things like that to me is just weird. So yeah, it's always going to give me these like weird vibes. Like, what are, what are we doing here? Hanif, toss that new room massage question to Pete. Oh, wait, can I say something? I wanted to touch on what Gia just said. Oh, I thought you was already. <laughs> don't start. Don't fucking start. <laughs> what I was going to say was, I don't think it's necessarily conceit. I think it, 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 it becomes that. And I mean, whether you believe in astrology or not, Scorpios are just what they are. We're highly sexual people. Um, we're very passionate people. And again, if we like you, you're going to know that we like you and you're going to know that we were there. Um, in, 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 to, to touch on what she said as far as not being able to fake it, a lot of girls who were like, oh, you know, he's taking me to dinner. I'm like, I'm sorry, I don't really like him like that, but I'm going to take this free meal. I can't do that. You know, I can't fake liking you. I can't fake being interested in you, especially not for a meal. It's going to show all over my face. You're going to know. I'm, I'm going to let you know that I think you're annoying. I'm going to be sarcastic. It's, it's going to be known. So it's to the point where it's not even worth it to me to even try to fake this, this date. You know what I mean? Well, I, I, I guess last episode we were talking about the new room massage and uh, Nas introduced it and told. <laughs> Is that that massage that that guy Black still on Instagram be doing? Yo, it's it's crazy because it's like the woman is oiling her body up and using her body parts to massage the man, right? Or I guess it could be vice versa, but yeah. So I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> the massage, the what massage you that Sora was talking about Pete, Pete, was sorry, go ahead. being in the shower, standing vertically. The, the massage that Sora was talking about was being in the shower, standing up so you're vertical, and she's all oiled up, lubed up, and she's massaging you with every part of her body. Right. Correct? That is correct. That is a new room massage. Whoa. Sounds yeah. frisky. Nasora, you did that actually before? Um, I'm not, I'm I'm not uh I'm not man enough to pay for that. All right. No. Oh, you gotta pay for these services. Let's, let's be let's be for real. Let's be for real for How a second. How much are they? Well, well, okay. I'm a. You know what? I'm gonna answer your question. Because I know you checked the price. You know I did. <laughs> you know I did. So they are charging two hundred and fifty dollars an hour. Whoa. For this. No, but um, as far as just a new room massage, I don't really know a normal, everyday professional woman that is doing that. That's 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 my real thing on that page. I was making jokes about the numbers, but realistically, Gia, I would never do that. See, see what I'm saying? This is what Hanif. Now, wait, 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 mm-hmm. wait, wait. Go ahead, wait. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Let me clarify. Yes, we we were talking about doing this as a paid service or something you would do for your no, person you're dealing paid. with service well no i was okay <laughs> they, they, they just they they they, they bulldozed <laughs> their way through that one i was just saying that okay my point that i was making is that everyday professional women aren't doing that so Dude, you're going to have to find this cares about her but jj ain't doing that oh, oh, oh. Gia, let me let me finish my point. You can say everything you want to say, love. All I'm, say- <laughs> all I'm saying is that all I'm saying is I hate the fact that this is now a paid service. Because let's say you're a husband. <laughs> if you're a husband and you like you saw this, you just you know you was just fiddling around Pornhub or X videos. You just landed on new room massage and you like, oh, 
Oh, oh my God. And hey, you talk to your wife and you like, hey, Gia, listen, look, you know I love you. The apple of my eye, the queen of everything she sees. Just look, this is what I want. Can you do this? And you like, no. Now you got to pay no, for this. No, I didn't mean I'm, I won't do that for my significant other. Mm. I mean, I won't do that as a paid service. Like, oh, okay. are you kidding me? If I don't know you, I'm just rubbing my box all around. Right. Oh, uh, right. Uh, that's, uh, what, uh, that's what I was saying. That's why I wanted to uh, 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 Hold on, 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 hold on. What if you know them? What if you are friendly or friends and... Mm. Like yo, I need I need you to come through for me, Mm-mm. and I'm gonna I'm offer good, you like you. I can send you some food through Uber Eats. <laughs> <laughs> like this hug, like you can call me. I can actually come through. We can smoke together. We can do an edible. Like I'm here for yo, you. This is this. Hey, is, y'all not y'all not doing sex therapy at all. I'm not. That's not a service for friends. I'm you ill. Mm-mm, nah, that's not a service for friends. You yeast infection and all like. Get, listen, the vagina is very sensitive. You gotta even be careful with the type of soap you use. I'm not rubbing my stuff all on your hairy, nasty, ashy ass body. No. <laughs> <laughs> You Let's probably use Irish Spring soap. I don't. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Yo, Irish Spring soap is the devil. Yes. <laughs> I'm on my worst enemy. Mm-hmm. Hey, yeah, that so is not for women. What did we learn from this new room massage? We learned that professional women won't only not do it for free. They won't do it for money either, okay? That's what we just learned. They're no, not that's it. not what we learned. We I would that? do that for my dude. I would oh. 100% do that for my yeah. dude. I'm not, I'm not going to be on Craigslist advertising my Nauru massage services. Okay, so yeah, Pete but would... You're not also, you also not doing it for like... Yeah, oh, homie. Homeboy, no, I'm yeah. not doing it for my homie. No, I'm not doing that for my homie. So only your husband and that's it? Somebody I'm having sex with. Got you. I don't know, that's... Fair, right, because I'm rubbing it all on you in the bedroom anyway. So going from the right. bedroom, nah, nah. See, 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 Gia be messing up. No, no, we ain't talking about in the bedroom. We talking about standing up in a stand know, up shower. I know, but it's the same. It's, it's no, the same it's not. Thing. Rubbing me. it on you, your face here in the bedroom and rubbing it on your arm in the shower, sweetheart. With have, oil, it ain't too much of a difference. Gia, have you watched? Have you watched it on xvideos.com? I urge you. I urge you to look at it. All right? Now, if you want to smoke some weed with, you know, since you like to smoke weed, you can smoke together and we can watch it together on a big screen just to, you know, get the study in. Was it hairy? That. Excuse me? Are the Crips trying to remake Nipsey Hussle's victory lap? Like, so we are two days away from the um, second anniversary of Nipsey's assassination. And um, it's interesting because recently his brother or his estate settled a lawsuit with the Crips of all people. The Crips has a, a, a corporate organization where they were fighting over the rights to the marathon continues. And they recently came to a settlement. And I just thought that that was, uh, you know, something that seemed to be uh, prophetic of what Nipsey was trying to do because he was trying to move out of the street life and move into business oriented things. So the fact that the Crips and his brother were able to settle the estate through the courts, as opposed to through the streets is something indicative of, I think he, what he wanted and what he was trying to do to move the culture forward. So, um, how do you all feel about, uh, this whole idea of the Crips being corporate and, you know, them battling through the courts as opposed to through the streets. So um, I actually did some research on that. And it, so it's this woman named Tia Hollis that is behind that. They're saying that the Crips LLC is not actually with the actual gang members Crips. They said she actually also have an LLC for Bloods. So mm-hmm. I'm not sure. Yeah, um, I actually read some into that. So it's not the actual gang member Crips. Is this girl Tia Hollis that's behind it. Um, I don't know what type of fun she have with them, but she have LLC for Bloods and Crips. Um, but from what I read, they were using the Marathon Continue for you know for stuff and 
you know, a Nipsey Hussle brother basically was suing them for using it. And I just feel like it's trash. You know, why are you trying to come up off this man death? It was that probably was the saddest death that yeah. I've witnessed in such a long, I didn't even know him, you know, but that was just sad as hell. And every time Lauren London posts, I just want to give her a hug. Like, it's just so sad. So I feel like... Me too. You know, that, that was... <laughs> I hate you. I feel like it was just so trash. Like, when I read it, I'm like, all right, here we go. But, you know, people were always trying to come up off somebody deaf, unfortunately. So, not surprised. That's true. I agree with that 100%. And especially... I didn't even listen to Nipsey like that. I wasn't a fan. But when he died and then and then you know how you always posthumously go and look at what they were talking about, what they were up to. He was dope. He was really really dope. And then, you know, you think about the way he the way he died and the fact that, you know, he was telling everybody not to have their guns or he would have been protected. It, it, it's sad. Mm. And um yeah, I feel like they are just trying to benefit off of his death and sadly that is just what happened. <laughs> oh wait! I'm sorry. I thought, I thought no. you were saying this was like a, a quick round. No, like, I like those, that. No, uh, I like that. No, no, that was perfect. The fact that I gotta cut, the fact that I gotta cut that and then gotta bring it all right back. I'm like, that was no, really good. I was good. waiting for the next question. I thought it was like a lightning round. I was I'm, waiting for the next. I, question. I thought so. Too. <laughs> so I thought that's what it was. Oh, now y'all want to do a lightning oh, round? Oh, oh, oh that's what y'all. Okay, no, 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 no. Yeah, I'm like, all right, all right. No, no. This is see, see, honey. I told you, Nick. Yo, they they was yeah. This is goats. Goats. All right, let's. I'm gonna start it That's again. I'm gonna no, no. be like, let me think, let me think, let me think. I got you. Okay, so look, this is where we're going. We're gonna start again from the top and we're gonna rapid okay. fire. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask the what makes a person immediately unattractive. You say what you say, then I'm gonna toss it to Gia. She gonna say it, then you're gonna toss it to you, then toss it to you, and then I'm gonna just ask Hanif a question, whatever, and he just boom, boom, and we end it. All right, y'all got it? Okay. Y'all ready? All right. My, my anxiety. Go ahead. Mm-hmm, there we go. <laughs> All right, Pay, I'm you I'm starting with you first. What makes a mm-hmm. person immediately unattractive? Bad tea. Gia, does rejection make you chase the person more? Yes. Pay, if women are so against men cheating, why do women let men cheat with them? Oh. 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 <laughs> Mm. This one, yeah, this isn't gonna be lightning at all. I know. I feel attacked. Uh, um, honestly, God, I shouldn't even say this with him here. Honestly, <laughs> I feel, you want me to answer it for you, sis? Yes, please. Yes, because that'd be the best sex. Yep. Mm. Yep. And no strings attached. Yep. I don't have to answer to you. You got they they normally have the best head, the best yep. they the best everything. They just so nasty. They eat it, pull it out, eat it again. They feed me. More than likely they smoke and you know, and I go home and I don't gotta think about you no more. And then I can see you posting pictures of you and your girlfriend acting like you happy. <laughs> two, and then two, and then two men tend to wipe the woman who's virginal and doesn't do anything. She's not nasty. She doesn't want to yeah. get down like that. And then you cheat with the woman who you, who you know will. As people don't date who they really want to date. Hey, yo, if, if, if I could chime in real quick, like I, I think I prefer married women for that same reason. <laughs> like I, 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 I've had a lot of relationships with a lot of married women and it's because it's like, oh, I don't have to commit to anything. I don't mm-hmm. have to do anything extra other than deal with you on that level. And it's it's easy and it's carefree and, mm-hmm. you know. All right, Hanif, I have one question for you. It will take it home. All right. Mm-hmm. Straight up. All right, Hanif, you ready for the question? I am. All right. If you were on a break in your relationship and your partner slept with someone else, would you count this as cheating? In a break? Nah, if we on a break, um, you can go out and explore and figure out what you want and do all of that. I don't want to know about it. I don't need to know details or anything like that. So I'm not going to um, count it against you. I have a question to you as a man. What the f- is a break? Is that a real thing? 
People say that. I feel like that's some. That's some. No, I don't mean to be rude and racial, but I think that's some white people. Shit. Like, who says that? Let's have a break. Like what? We, we, that, isn't the relationship over? That means the relationship is over. If someone woman said we should take a break, like I might as well just like I'm dead in this. This is this relationship is. I over. mean, if I if, if I could be transparent, like in in my long term relationship, my break was I I moved out the house, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I moved back to Jersey, yeah, and we were technically not together, but there was still some residual things there. It was like, all right, we can probably figure this thing out, but it's still a break. And in that, uh, both of us were seeing other people. So I can't, I'm not going to hold that against you. I'm not going to hold that over your head because we're making a concerted decision to say, all right, we need to figure out if we still mesh or if we still have something. And if you need to go out and, you know, mingle with other people or whatever to see if something is still there with us, then, you know, you got to give that pass. Gia, I'm going to let you end this show off. So, a break. Is this a real thing, yes and no? And if it is, why should I respect a woman that tells me some bullshit like that? (laughs) Why I got to be the woman? No, no, no. I mean, well, I'm I'm as a guy and, and I'm with a woman. That's all I'm saying. Let's say if the woman told me Yo, I think let's we should take, take a, a break. break. Yeah, and I, I think if a woman tell you let's take a break, mm-hmm. it's over. Right, it's over. right. Mm-hmm. That's what I, I was I thinking. Don't see a relationship coming back from a quote unquote break. I wouldn't want you anymore. Exactly. And I feel like that's a way. I honestly think a break is on some narcissist type bullshit because it's still some type of restraint there. Like, I, I, I'm, I'm letting you do your thing, but we all know I really don't want you to do your thing. And if you do your thing, I'm going to be mad. And if we get back together, I'm going to act like I'm not mad, but I'm still going to feel some type of way about that. This, is, my, like mm-hmm. break is, this <clears throat> is why I just personally believe that honesty just would clean all of this up. Because here's, here goes my thing. If you don't want to be with me no more, we're, we're intimate, we're living together, all that, I'm not going to lie to you. In 2021, if I had a girlfriend right now and she broke up with me today, my only question to her after she breaks up to me is, listen, can we at least have sex twice a week still, though? What? Are you that's dumb? It. That's all I want. That's what, I, listen, look. But that's because, like, emotions get involved. Like, when we're in love with somebody, no matter what we say, we we have a sense of ownership over them. But no so one, I know that it's not working out, but I still kind of want to have access to you, so I call it a break. See, this is why I say all these things. I say these things because... <laughs> we're not, see, we're not no, 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 it's all right. I, no, I, I got something for you. I got something for Are you, my little scorpion. you still paying my bills after that? Let Did me you tell you something. paying my bills. <laughs> so, if we still paying your bills, then sex is still on the table, is what you're saying? Yeah, why not? Uh, all right, that, I mean, that's fine. So we, we we learned that lesson today, folks. All right, you you heard you heard what the I woman know, just said. I don't want it anymore. <laughs> then, then we're going to stop that too. <laughs> all all I'm funny as hell. All I'm saying is because the last uh, Scorpio that 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 I was with. Why would I add a body count? Uh, you know, uh, right uh, now, uh, like I can keep my body count low. Have you still paying them bills until I meet somebody that can completely replace you? Then I'm good. I think. Can I answer? I want, how come I didn't get to answer the question? Go ahead, Pete. <laughs> I think it's all in who who initiated the break. You know what I mean? If I said, let's have a break, we're probably not getting back together. If you said, let's have a break, then I really don't want you messing with nobody else because that's I me. Mean, that's what you really wanted to do. That was the reason for the break. I dig that. All I'm saying is that if you tell me that I'm going to ask for sex twice a week because the last Scorpio that did that to me, I'm like, well, listen, girl, ain't nobody lick my nipples and my ass like you. So listen, twice a week. Oh, yeah, she was definitely a Scorpio. Twice a week. That was definitely a Scorpio. That's the show. Hold on. Please subscribe and download to The Late Night Flight on Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, and Spotify. Every subscription helps us towards our efforts in having a career in podcast radio broadcasting. Hey, yo, what the f***? This is a pallet right here.